So after a rather conspicuous no-show at CES 2023, Sony TVs are finally here. Was it worth the wait? You be the judge. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I am willing to bet money that I am almost as excited to make this video as you are to watch it. I mean, I don't mean to sound too presumptuous here, I just mean that I think we've all been eager to find out what Sony has in store for 2023 TVs since they chose not to make an announcement earlier this year at CES as they always have in the past. And we can talk a little bit about why I think they made that choice or more to the point why most of the speculation I've read about why they made that choice is wrong, but that needs to come later because there is so much TV stuff to cover. Some of it is legitimately exciting. A few changes, a few surprises, so let's get into it, shall we? Or do we need to wait for a minute? I mean, do you really need a reminder to, no? Okay, I didn't think so. But hey, stick around until the end. I've got a question for you that I'm hoping you'll answer in the comment section. Okay, let's talk about Sony TVs. So before I get to models, specs, and features here, let me just explain that I flew to New York to see these TVs a little while ago. And as I'm recording this video, the pricing information has not been released. By the time this video is released, however, the pricing will have gone live, so I'll leave a link in the description to full pricing details on all the TVs mentioned here. Whoa, 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 don't click away now. Or if you do, just open it in a different window, will ya? Stay with me here because some of the pricing may not make sense until you hear what's up with some of the shifts in Sony's TV lineup. Oh, and by the way, I'm just gonna run down the lineup fairly quickly here, and then we'll dig in deeper on three of the TVs a little bit later because those are the three I got to shoot while I was at Sony's HQ. And I'm keeping this rundown section as quick as I can so you can see less of this face and more of Sony's TVs. I hope that's okay with you. With that said, let's start right at the top, okay? We have the A95L QD OLED TV. This replaces the A95K from 2022. You expected this, right? It uses Samsung Display's newer, more efficient QD OLED panel with higher brightness capability. I could not measure the TV and Sony never talks metrics like ever, but I do have some brightness comments coming in the back half of this video, so hang tight with me. Next down the line, right under the A95L is the A90K from 2022. That's sticking around. It's still a master series TV, still just the two small sizes, still kind of a weird choice by Sony, but I digress. They're holding that model over from the last year. Next down the line is the all new A80L replacing the A80K from last year. And what I know you want to know is that this TV does not use the new LG Display Meta or MLA OLED panel. And I didn't expect it to. MLA is a premium tier OLED. And while that works for LG and Panasonic, it doesn't work so much for Sony who is all about QD OLED for their premium stuff at least for now. Sony did say they were looking at MLA, but the A80L here is more like the C3 from LG. So it makes sense that it would not get an MLA screen. More details on this TV coming soon because they are shared with most of the other TVs as well. So that's the OLED lineup, two new models and one carryover. Next, let's talk about the LED LCD lineup. We'll start with the new X95L, which sounds like it might be a replacement for the X95K from last year, but it is not. This is an all new TV tier from Sony. This is like the God tier 4K mini LED set. More dimming zones, more powerful backlight, and a few other bonuses I'll mention later. I was not expecting this from Sony, nor the next model I have to tell you about. And that would be the new X93L, now, this is a weird one because the new model number here sounds like a new TV tier, but it isn't. It's the replacement for the X95K from 2022. In fact, it looks exactly like the X95K from the outside and, and the performance. I honestly can't see much of a difference at all in terms of the design and specs. So we'll have to see if there's something I'm missing here, but this sounds like a carryover from last year with a new model number. It's possible that it's just existing hardware with new software uh, for this X93L, but the X95L really is the new hotness with new hardware and software. So, you know what, that's kind of confusing. Let's just reiterate that. The X95L, brand new TV tier from Sony. We've never seen it before. It sounds like the X95K, but it isn't. What is the X95K basically is the new X93L. 
I know, don't shoot the messenger. Anyway, below those two TVs, we now have the X90L. And this one is especially exciting because this is Sony's kind of bread and butter TV. They consider it kind of their gold standard, right? This really is the biggest value proposition that Sony has because it is their least expensive, but still ultra premium TV. And folks, it looks better than ever. Now, before I comment on the three TVs I shot while I was in New York, I wanna go over a few new features that Sony has rolled out across the Bravia line. The one that I think will get the most attention is Sony's new gaming dashboard. It's like Sony teams in Japan got the memo that Sony TVs were taking some heat here in North America for not being as gaming friendly as they should be, especially considering Sony makes the PlayStation 5. Well, this gaming dashboard is an interesting step in the right direction. As you can see here, you can adjust black levels here, turn on VRR or turn it off and turn on black frame insertion or backlight manipulation for smoother, fast motion resolution. You can also add crosshairs to any game. There are multiple crosshair options too, and that's all done at the TV level, which is kind of interesting. What do you think about that? Drop me a comment down below. But one super interesting change is that you can adjust the screen size down to something smaller if you wanna get in tight with the TV and compete on FPS games. This does change the resolution, but it'll match up with the screen size. And I look forward to playing around with this some more. Another interesting addition is this new Bravia Clear Picture Processing. I'll dig into this more in the actual TV reviews that we do, but think of it as a detector of poorly upconverted 4K signals. So say you've got a Blu-ray disc player or an AV receiver or even an NVIDIA Shield, and that product is doing upscaling to 4K. Ideally, you wouldn't use your disc player receiver or shield upscaling. But for those who don't know to turn it off, this new processing will detect that the OG signal was not 4K and apply some extra cleanup to the signal for better overall picture. How well does it work? We'll see, but I mean, in theory, I think it's kind of a cool idea. Now, there are a ton of other features I just can't get into now. We'll save those for the reviews, but suffice to say, Sony is coming on strong with the features this year, and it'll be fun to dive into those as we go through all these new TVs through reviews. Although I am just gonna sneak this one thing in here now and prepare myself for the comments. Two full bandwidth 48 gigabit per second HDMI 2.1 ports, and yeah, I think one of them is an eARC port. Don't shoot the messenger, but if you do want my take on this, check out this video about the very topic if you haven't already. But now let's have some fun. Let's hone in on the three TVs I got to dig a little bit deeper with. I did not get to measure these TVs. I didn't get to choose what was up on them. I just got to shoot them and, and look at them while I got the video. Anyway, we'll start with the A95L QD OLED. And I can tell you that I am already a big fan of Sony's implementation of this new Samsung Display QD OLED panel. Now, because it is Sony, all of the TVs I'm talking about here have been designed to reproduce as closely as possible what you would see on a Sony BVM reference monitor, the stuff that Hollywood uses to, to, to master stuff. In fact, in the private demo, Sony had a BVM HX310 showing the same content that was up on the TVs, and indeed, they all matched up very well, specifically in the areas of bright details and shadow details. Now, you can turn off Sony's gradation preferred setting and go with the brightness preferred setting if you want to, and you can move to standard picture mode, which is gonna give you even higher perceived brightness. No matter what though, one thing Sony will not budge on is recreating what was intended by the content creator, and I think they're doing a really good job with that. With that said, the A95L is the best example I've seen yet of an OLED-based TV just tearing it up in the brightness department. Granted, we haven't really dug deep on LG's G3 OLED yet, and I can't exactly compare it to the S95C, although I did see it on the same weekend, but I think the A95L will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the S95C and LG's G3 in the average picture level brightness department. The days of but it isn't a great bright room TV commentary are coming to an end, starting with TVs like the A95L. Done deal, y'all. I think that right there is a super exciting development. In fact, I'm just gonna predict right now that the A95L will be the video geek's 
the knit nerds choice for 2023. I mean, if history has anything to say about it, the A95L is the TV to beat this year from a pure performance perspective. It might be the closest to perfection that we've seen yet. I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. Sony, hurry up. I need this thing like yesterday. Oh, and you may have already noticed it has a more conventional stand this year. The 77 inch has four options, right? So flush to whatever it's sitting on or raised for a soundbar with the legs placed either at the extreme ends or closer in toward the middle for use on smaller entertainment stands or credenzas or whatever. The 55 and 65 inch models still let you go for flush or soundbar friendly, but the legs only install at the far ends of the TV. Next up is the X95L and folks, honestly, I think this is as close to a Z series TV that one of Sony's X series 4K TVs have ever gotten. It looks bright, punchy, rich. It clearly has more local dimming zones paired with Sony's already advanced backlight tech. And I figure this thing is gonna cost a small mint, but it will probably still be less than the Z9K 8K mini LED TV that carries over from 2022. So just a little sidebar here, there is no Z9L. I'm sorry, the Z9K is carrying over. Anyway, I can't wait to line this TV up against the Samsung QN95C. I think that is gonna be one heck of a TV battle. Maybe the most exciting one this year? I don't know, what do you think? Leave me a comment down below. And finally, let's talk about the X90L. As a reminder, again, Sony doesn't talk about how many local dimming zones they use, or how many mini LED backlights they pack into any of their sets. They never have, and I doubt they ever will. But they did tell me that they have significantly increased the number of zones for the X90L. So I will be counting them on this one, much to my chagrin. Anyway, the blooming slash halo issues on this TV have been significantly mitigated, or at least it looked that way based on what I was able to see while I was there. And Sony had some pretty challenging HDR content playing, so I feel like I got a pretty good look. I mean, that seems big to me because the backlight glow was the chief complaint about the X90K and X90J predecessors, right? The X90L looks significantly better and might just be the highest value in high performance TV that we'll see this year. We will definitely know soon. So, wow, I hope you enjoyed that rundown and feel like you understand Sony's lineup a little bit better. I do think this is gonna be one of Sony's strongest years in what is clearly one of the most exciting years for TVs that we've had in some time. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Are you excited to see these new Sony TVs in action? I mean, seriously, leave me a comment about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.